Welcome to another edition of the show. Mark Elder joins us as we talk EKU football. Off to a 1-1 one one start. You beat Moorhead State at home on a Thursday night and then lose 32-16 to Marshall, one of the top CUSA teams. So through two games with different yardsticks to measure, where do you measure your team? Well, I think that we're in a good spot. I mean, we were we were competitive against Marshall, uh, made too many mistakes in a game against a team as talented as they are to uh, to be able to win that one. But uh, we were very competitive in the game. I mean, it, it was in the third quarter, we we're within a score, and and uh, thought we went back and forth with them quite a bit. So uh, I think that we're in a good spot. We've got a great challenge in front of us uh, coming coming up this weekend, but um, I'm pleased with where our team is, where we are chemistry-wise and, and as far as a, a team. There has been a concerted effort to establish the rush, and for good reason, with the backs you have and a more veteran offensive line with more depth. How do you feel like you're doing at the rushing game so far? Well, we did a very good job in the first game, and we, we rushed 400 and something yards. Uh, we had quite a bit more difficulty this past weekend. I mean, their their front, their box is, was really good at Marshall. Right. I mean, they're very athletic. They're long, uh, physical guys, and, and so we weren't able to move them off the ball uh, like we were in, in week one. So we didn't have quite the success that we had uh, in week one. But, um, I, again, we, we feel really good about our backs. We feel much better about our offensive line. I think that at the end of the season, you'll, we'll look back and say we ran the ball effectively. Uh, we've got some things that we've got to clean up from a week ago, but but I think that we're in a good spot. You have taken a look at all three quarterbacks through the first two games, and uh, you've seen some good things and some things that you can improve upon. So where are you at quarterback right now? Yeah, we, we feel like we've got three guys that are very, very capable and, and guys that um, can help us win games and, and each has a little bit different skill set. And, and so um, it's great to have multiple options at that position for sure for um, A, because they bring different things to the table, but B, um, if you ever have injuries, it's, it's good to have guys that have experience and have, have played meaningful downs. On the defensive side of the football, we talked about that on our preseason show. You're a much deeper team and uh, it looks like you have a, a, the makings of a salty defense this year. Yes, we've, we've played fairly well uh, both weeks uh, defensively. You know, uh, the, the first week we, we gave up a couple touchdowns late in the game, but um, outside of a play or two when, when the, the bulk of the guys that are going to play for us uh, were in, we did very, very well. And then last week I thought that we had a great plan. Our guys played their tails off, um, had a couple missed opportunities and a couple undisciplined mistakes that we got to get cleaned up, but I uh, thought that they did a really nice job. Leotis Moore, uh, one of your defensive backs named OBC Player of the Week on defense. He had a he had a couple of he had a special teams block. He had an interception. He had seven tackles, one for loss. Good effort by him. I thought Ben Baskin played well that game as well. Yeah, no, uh, Trey had a, had a really good game, uh, did a nice job. He was all over the field, made a bunch of tackles, uh, a couple big plays with the, the nice pick. Uh, the, the guy bobbled it, and he, he had a heck of a play on that one there. Uh, did a great job coming off the edge on the field goal to block that. Uh, so, no, he had, a, he had a really good day. Ben had a really good day. There was a number of guys that did, that did some good things. But uh, I thought that those guys certainly, as you said, they stood out. Bowling Green is O. And two, but there are two power five losses to Oregon on the road to Maryland at home. Got a nice quarterback in Jason Deji, a 60% passer, already five touchdowns. Uh, he started half of their games last year. Yeah, he came in about midway through the season and, and did a great job. He threw for over 60%, really good touchdown to interception ratio. Um, I think he's a, a really talented guy. He, uh, they don't run him a ton, but he's athletic. He can extend plays. Uh, he's got a very nice arm, makes good decisions, doesn't put the ball in jeopardy very often. Uh, so I think that he does a really nice job. And, and you reference the two games that they've played. Um, yes, they're 0-2. I think it's a, a little bit um, – misleading because they had a 10 nothing lead against Oregon. Uh, they had a lead at halftime against Maryland, and Maryland's a pretty good football team. So uh, I think that they're a very talented team, a very good team, and, and we're going to need to have a great week of preparation for our best opportunity. There on this EKU coaching staff, you and some of your assistants, a big footprint in the MAC. Yeah. You uh, were an assistant coach uh, at Central Michigan at, at Akron, two of your assistants played football in the MAC, and three others have coached uh, in the MAC, and it's a recruiting ground for you. So familiar with what back football is all about. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a really good conference, and and uh, a lot of explosive offenses, and, and so very familiar with the conference. And it's changed since I was in it. I mean, the, the 
several coaching staffs later. Um, but you know, you, it's a great product, and, and so Bowling Green is a traditional power in that conference. I, I would anticipate that it's going to be a great atmosphere, and, and that they're going to be ready to play. What do you want out of your team? Because the next week, OBC play begins. I'm concerned about one game, and that's this one. Um, want us to play with great effort. I thought that we did that uh, both of the first two weeks. I want us to, to clean up with some of our discipline issues and, and just play within ourselves. Um, that, that's really what I'm looking for is, is tremendous effort and, and being a little bit more disciplined, a little bit cleaner of a game. All right, Mark, good luck against the Falcons of Bowling Green State. Thank you, Seth. All right, that's Mark Elder. We have you covered as Eastern Kentucky and Bowling Green play at 4 o'clock on Saturday. You can hear our radio call on WCYO-FM 100.7, streaming at EKUSports.com and on the TuneIn app, and the game also airing on ESPN3. When we come back here on Inside EKU Sports, we'll check in with the head coach of the EKU women's soccer team who plays at home this coming weekend. But first, we're going to take a look at the new honor for EKU's new science building, Phase 2. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with a slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. At EKU, you'll learn to take a broader view of your world. But we also understand it's the details that shape the big picture. So go ahead, play with fire, think on your feet, or touch the sky. Here, you'll be a part of something new, something big, something beautiful. Be a Colonel. Your time is now. Through the cooperation of designers, builders, and EKU faculty and staff, Phase 1 and now the LEED Gold Certified Phase 2 of the EKU Science Building stands as a testament to EKU's commitment to meeting the needs of students and those of the environment. Faculty and staff alike have been absolutely instrumental in the design of this building, both Phase 1 and Phase 2, and that process started way back in 2005. And we've got a building now that works the way we want it to work. It's great. In order to minimize the energy needed for climate control, the building employs a high efficiency heat exchanger and air quality is controlled using sensor gathered data. The passive solar overhang above the south facing lobby windows allows the low winter sun in while keeping the high summer sun out. Double door airlock entryways prevent heat or cool air loss when entering and exiting. Through careful window design, much of the building utilizes borrowed light, minimizing the need for powered lighting during the day. Also, some of the windows contain frits or dots that scatter and diffuse sunlight, further reducing the need for electricity. Cool roofs absorb minimal heat from sunlight, reducing the energy needs for air conditioning. The building also generates energy on site. Approximately 150 donor supplied solar panels feed directly into the building's energy grid. Building materials also play a role in reducing environmental impact. Inside the building, the polished concrete floor is durable and eliminates the need for toxic flooring materials and adhesives. The minimal amount of carpeting consists of 100% recycled plastics. The furnishings and upholstery throughout the building are made of 80% recycled plastic blended with cotton. No adhesives or backings in the furniture or carpets contain volatile organic chemicals that leak into the air. The grand stairway in the main lobby uses seven different kinds of wood reclaimed from old buildings in Kentucky. The exterior is composed of locally produced brick and zinc panels. Made of 30% recycled material, the panels are 100% recyclable and are non-corrosive. 
A stormwater system also collects, slows, and filters runoff, and green roofs provide added insulation and help to retain and filter rainwater. In addition to being environmentally friendly, the science building itself serves as a dynamic learning environment. In the Division of Natural Areas, we definitely use the teaching parts of the building. We'll collect uh, chemical data with my students on water quality down here in the wetlands so we can talk about how you can use that as a real-life application of chemistry in a classroom. In the College of Science, student success is our passion, so everything we do, you can trace that all the way back to our students. The LEED certification for our residence hall was significant because it was the first in Kentucky. And now to have the, the gold certification for our new science building right next door, I think it's so significant because it's really an embodiment of our campus commitment uh, to a, a green environment, to a sustainable environment. And uh, you can, you know, as they say, talk the talk, but we're walking the walk, and I think that's very important. Nick Flory in his third year as the head coach of the EKU soccer team. They're off to a 4-4 four and four start against Nick. A really brutal schedule and a couple of good wins of those four. You yep. beat Kentucky 1-0 for your second clean sheet. Your first clean sheet as a team was against Ball State that is a three-time defending champion of the MAC West. So uh, good wins there. Yeah, we scheduled it and we told the girls we want to put them in a position where they're always challenging on conference so we get to the point where we're playing higher then we will need to at conference. And if we can play at a level that conference teams can't compete with, then we'll be in a pretty good place. So we, we scheduled our non-conference with the difficulty level on purpose. And it's also allowed us to learn a lot about ourselves. This past weekend, for an example, I mean, we're trying to look at it as a positive way that we have this whole week of training before conference starts to get better at what we were exposed at. You've had uh, four different players have multiple goals this year. So uh, right now, do you feel like you're more of an offensive team or more hanging your hat on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, a little more attack minded right now. We got to get back to a little bit more of uh, balance things out a little bit because I think that's one of the issues we've had is being exposed defensively. But it's been great in the attack that we're balanced. You know, I don't think anybody can isolate on just one player because we have multiple players chipping in, which is a good thing. We just have to uh, clean some things up defensively before conference starts. You had a senior in goal, uh, actually, the last two years in Anna Hall. Now a, a true freshman mm -hmm. is in goal in Zoe Aguirre, and she's had baptism under fire. Yeah, she's done well, though. I, I think, you know, she was brilliant and one of the best players we had against Kentucky. And then some of the other games, you know, I think she's, she's just learning. She's a young kid. I mean, she's still 17 years old. So even as a freshman, she's a young freshman. But she's got a lot of potential, um, and she wants to get better, and she wants to play well. So I think we're, she's going through some growing pains right now at the college level, but I think she'll learn from them and keep getting better. What is the, the one thing you've been most happy about from what you've seen in these first eight games? Because now you head for conference after uh, these eight are in the book. Yeah, I think the girls are just at a point where they want to keep getting better. Um, and they think that they're confident going into conference that we can have a really good season. So they're, they're looking forward to getting back to the training. I think this weekend was, you know, an eye opening, a little bit humbling this past weekend, but we're at a point where we know we have to get better at some things, and I think they're motivated to do that. The, uh, the game of soccer is different than a lot of other sports. It's, uh, you'll see a 1 0 game, and it could have been 3 1, and yeah. then you'll see some other games that are different. What, what do you tell the girls when they go out on the field? What are you looking for in a game? Are you looking at the scoreboard more in this non conference or just the way they play? The way we play. Mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely want to win every game we play, but we need to keep getting better at what we're trying to do well at. And, you know, we've had some issues, but we're doing, I think in a couple of the losses we've had, we've actually played better. I mean, I, I think in, we've, Marshall, for an example, we gave up two bad chances for them and they took advantage of them, but I thought we dominated the majority of the game. And that's the funny thing about soccer is we can dominate a game and still lose. Um, but if we can clean up these little details, I think we're on the right track. It's just, we have to couple things we need to get better at. Um, but as far as non-conference goes, we worry about more us than the opponent. You know, we do obviously take care of prepping for every team we play, but it's how we're playing. 
There were uh, eight non-conference games, as we said. Six were on the road. Mm -hmm. Now you open Ohio Valley Conference play, and the first three yeah. are at home, including the first one on Friday afternoon against SIU Edwardsville, followed by EIU at 1 o'clock. And I know uh, EKU and Edwardsville have had some good battles since you've been here. It's been a good couple of years against them. I, I think we've always had competitive games with them. They've gotten us a couple of times. We've gotten them a couple of times. It's, it's a game that the girls look forward to. And it's a, it's a couple of weeks where the girls are looking forward to just being home. I, We've, besides being a tough non-conference schedule, being on the road hasn't helped either. So being home in a couple, you know, a couple weeks in a row is going to be helpful. What's the goal for this season? I know you've been to the OVC tournament championship and come up runner-up the last two years. So yeah. have you set a certain goal for this season? Right now, we have to just worry about getting better. I think if we can take care of the things that we need to get better at, the rest will take care of itself. I mean, I think the girls will say they want to get through that last game that we haven't been able to get through. But I think from our coaching staff, it's a matter of improving some of the little details that we're struggling with right now. Okay, Nick, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Nick Flory, head coach of the EKU women's soccer team. Again, OVC play starts at the EKU soccer field. It'll be a 4 o'clock first kick against SIU Edwardsville, followed by a 1 o'clock Sunday game against Eastern Illinois. And then the next weekend, Moorhead State comes to town. When we come back, we'll talk to a senior leader of the EKU volleyball team. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Welcome back to the show. We're going to talk Road Warriors now. That's EKU Volleyball. They've been to three different tournaments in State College, Pennsylvania, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and their last, last weekend in Las Vegas. And their senior leader is Chloe Rogis, the defensive specialist. How about all those flights and time zone changes? You guys got to be a little <laughs> tired, a lot of yeah. experiences. Yep, it was pretty crazy, but you it's have been played fun. the most brutal schedule throughout mm -hmm. the non conference and three more coming up this weekend. I know it doesn't help the record, but it helps you with a yardstick to see what you have to work mm -hmm. on, and you play better players at times or a better team gets you ready once you come into your conference. So, talk to me about the experience. You're a senior, you've been through it in yeah. past years. <laughs> Um, well, Coach always likes to say, like, iron sharpens iron. And so um, I like to think of it that way, too. Like, playing the best will make you better. And um, just the experience of playing teams like Penn State or UNLV, like, it's it's really nothing that you can ever compare it to. And looking back, like, those will be the teams that are that, are, that you want to fight against and, like, do your best against knowing that, like, we've got nothing to lose. So, yeah, so it's been it's been crazy, but it's been a lot of fun. So You had 27 digs in the Friday win over Cal State Fullerton, a, a good 3-2 win for the team. Talk to me about that game. Yeah, that was a fun game. Um, I think just going into it, not having a win yet on the season, we went in, like, you always have to fight. We have to work for it. Like, it's not going to come easy, but, like, we need a win. And so coming out on top after that was – it was definitely a team effort, I think, too. Like, everyone played their role, did their job, and we got a win. So it was, it was definitely what we'd finally been waiting for. You were named OVC Defensive Player of the Year last year in, in the league. Uh, so coming into this season, you're a senior, a leader. D does that moniker of being the best defensive player last year carry over to this year? And if so, in what way? 
Um, well, I'd like to look at it as like I've done, I did that last season, but it's not a pressure thing to do it again this season, but to see what I did right last season and like how I helped the team, how I gave, gave our team success and use it in that sort of aspect. Like how can I replicate that so that I can try and be the best for my team? Um, and so not using it as a pressure, like I have to do that again, but rather I, I want to do that just so that I can know that I'm giving it all for my team and making us successful. I can so. relate to you in college. I, I was a double major in college. Oh, yeah. uh, you're a double major in journalism and Spanish. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a good mixture. You can put that to use in many, many ways. Uh, yeah. What's it meant to you in, in college to do those two varying types of uh, degrees? I really enjoyed it because for me, they're just very different majors and very different people within the majors. Um, and so it gives me a lot of variety from day to day or from class to class. Um, so for me, it's given me a lot of um, just more experience and knowing um, more than just one particular major. And so I think it'll benefit me a lot going forward and whatever career I end up in. So. Still not sure where you want to go with your career, right? <laughs> not exactly volleyball. sure. Right yeah. now I'm leaning towards something within editing or publishing because um, I really like books and writing. Right. And so, yeah, starting to look at that sort of You still job. got that 4.0 going? I do. Wow. Any pressure? Like, you know, make sure that B doesn't creep yeah, in right. in any class or anything. How many um, hours do you have left till you get the degree? Um, I have, I think I have to take 20 hours next semester. So okay. next semester is going to be a yeah, fun well, one. Volleyball season will be over. Mm -hmm. you, you can knock it out. Uh, yeah. So proud of you both on the court and, and in the classroom. Oh, You're you. the model uh, student athlete, Chloe. Well, uh, and you. good luck this weekend because three more games coming up. Mm -hmm. Three more. Yeah. Not, at least you're not on a plane to get to these. Yes. <laughs> Thankful okay. for that. This is where the volleyball team goes this weekend. The Xavier Invitational. They'll play Cincinnati and then Xavier on Friday in then Indiana University on Saturday. And that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. You can keep up with Colonel Athletics wherever you are by liking and following our channels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you again next week. And until then, go Big E.